it's funny because I knew that this day would come, but I didn't know how fast. You all are laughing at me, but it's funny how everybody else can see my situation better than I can see. But God is still able, and the thing that's so funny about it, it brought me to the scripture that we had today. Uh, I know some of you are probably ready and probably see, why did he pick that scripture? But this scripture has been on my heart and on my mind for a long time. We're talking about back in the 80s when I first heard it. And I didn't understand what it was all about, but I, I kind of understood it. But you understand things a little bit differently as you get older. Come on. And so in reading the scripture, the scripture or the, the subject I have for today is my story is not over yet. My story is not over yet. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. As we look at Abram, who has been traveling around with his father, uh, and the thing about it with, he, with him, Abram, Abram, as we know as Abraham, it's interesting that when he traveled with his father, he's doing everything that his father needed him to do. He's like the right hand man for his father. But then when it says, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, yeah. your people, in your father's household to the land, I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you, and all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, and the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old, and he set out from here. When I think about this, I kind of look at Abram's life, or at this point, that's kind of parallel to what I'm going through. In fact, I believe that all of us probably have that type of parallel with something in the Bible, amen? Because I look at the situation where I grew up here, Greater St. John, under my father. These are the people that my father cultivated relationships with. We had all these different things, a different relationship. We have brothers and sisters. I still call all of the people who I grew up with brothers and sisters because yeah. we were family here. And then when he says, I need you to go away from your country, this is my country. Yeah. 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 Away from your father's household. This is my father's house. This is where my father put in 40 some odd years. Come on. Yeah. And so it's weird because I actually kind of found out that what was going on was God was trying in Abram's life to set or lay down a new foundation. When you look at the scripture, we see that God has called Abram to make a drastic change in his life. God has told Abram that he needs to leave the land of his father. He was told to leave his comfortable surroundings that he could see some other things. And I always, I always wondered these different things when I saw, why would he, God want this person to do something different? So what I had to do was I kind of had to look back in chapter 11. And in chapter 11, it shows the lineage of Abram. It goes back nine generations, all the way back to one of Noah's sons, which was Shem. And I found that Abram's father was named Terah. But this is very interesting. Watch what it says in the 31st verse of the 11th chapter. It says, Terah, who was Abram's father, Terah took his son Abram and grandson Lot from Haran, and his son-in-law and his daughter-in-law, Sarah, the wife of the son Abram. And together they set out from Ur on the land of the Shidians to go to Canaan. But when they got to Haran, they settled there. At this point, I started to wonder, did God talk to Terah first? Was this vision for Abraham or was it for Terah first, his father? Was it because his father didn't want to see what God had for him? And it was, was he felt like he was not built for whatever God had for him? Because Terah, he stayed right there in Haran. So now I'm thinking, wait a minute, since his father 
did not follow God's instructions. Are we going to say that now the, the task has now been moved down to his son? There are prognosticators that say that either way, the father didn't follow the instructions, so he went down to the next generation so they'll be blessed. Then others may say the blessing was only reserved for Abel. Either way, God is still in the blessing business. All Amen? Right All right. It's amazing how the Bible mirrors our, our individual lives. Sometimes it could be a sign, and then other times it could be just a coincidence. But when I look at this scripture, it brings me back to 1988. Mm. In the fall of that year, I was in tears at the choir rehearsal. I was on my knees. I was right over there at the altar. There were three young ladies who prayed around me because I was being pulled from here. Now watch this. It's very interesting. Because when I was getting ready to leave here, I had no idea where I was going next. In 1988, some of you all probably remember. But when I left here at Greater St. John, I ended up going to a place called Canaan. Mm. <laughs> Canaan AME in Maywood. So I'm looking at the same parallels. Abraham was supposed to be going to Canaan. I'm like, what's going on here? What you, you playing around with me? What's going on? So those of you all who see the history, or it's funny because some of you all who know me know what I went through. The thing is, when I went to Canaan, I was opened up to certain things. I, certain things that I probably would not have been able to do if I still stayed here if I did not obey God. Because I felt it on my heart. Yeah. It wasn't that it was anything bad here or anything like that. It was just that I was being pulled there for the situation. I wasn't trying for a job to go out there or anything like that. They just needed help. I was here. I was there. I was everywhere, as they said. <laughs> but God needed me to go out like Abraham to establish something new. At that time, I had no idea what it was, but God knew exactly what he was doing. Amen? Amen. But guess what? Favor actually will follow the obedience to God. Yes. Yes. Favor will follow Teach obedience that. to God. Interestingly enough, the second verse of the scripture, we can see that God tells Abram after he gets to his destination in Canaan, he says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Yes. Basically, God is making promises to Abram about what's going to happen after you obey me. All right. Abram gets to his destination and God blesses him abundantly. God becomes a major faith figure in the region of Canaan. He becomes rich and, and has whatever he wants, what, 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 beyond whatever he could imagine. Now, Abraham is in a position to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, for whoever he wants. If he, you remember when they talked about a lot got into a little bit of trouble and he went in and got his 300 men and they went in and got a lot out of trouble and came back with all 318? You know that Abraham has some stuff going on, amen? And God was with him. So, in other words, in the modern day, we say Abraham was known as the man. All right. All because he decided to follow. God's instructions. Yes. I want to believe that after I left here in 1988, I was following God's instructions. Mm -hmm. Just to give you a little background, if you haven't really heard about it, all of the places that I have been and I had left, I left in good terms. Yes. Yes. Every one place that I had gone, on. and they knew that I had to leave for whatever reason, I had an ecumenical journey as a musician. The funny thing about it, Dorothy's going to be able to appreciate this. Dorothy, you're going to appreciate this in a few seconds. Dorothy Starks went to my grandfather's church in Jackson, Mississippi. Am I right? Yes. I've gone to several churches. People know who my grandfather was. Right. I had no idea. <laughs> my grandfather has been gone since January of 79. He put in 50 years of ministry. Just last week, a visitor came to the church who was a sister of one of our ushers. And they said, hey, 
do you have any family in Mississippi? I said, yeah, my family came from Jackson, Mississippi. And she said, really, that's interesting. What church is it? I said, oh, well, my grandfather used to be a pastor of an uh, Andy church down there called Bethel. When I said that, they looked at each other. <laughs> what street is that? I said, it's on Decatur Street. And they looked at each other again. Hmm. And they said, we used to go there when we were kids. They started naming all these people. I said, I don't know who they are. I just know that my grandfather was the pastor. So everywhere I have gone, it kind of feels good to that connection to my grandfather because I always thought that he was always there with me. But just so you can see the history of what's going on, I was at Canaan from 88 to 1995. While I was there, I was at St. Paul on the west side, at St. Ma Matthew in Argo. And then I also played for prayer warriors, Reverend Cook. Y'all remember Reverend Eddie, Edward Cook? And also, I was at St. John in Aurora. I went to Cary the Centenary from 95 and 97, Merrill Avenue Baptist Church, Antioch Baptist Church, right down the street. Cary the Centenary again, and then the time that I had was in 2007, 2008. I had the most fun is when I was at Greater St. John, and I wasn't playing. I was teaching Sunday school. You all remember that year? That year was the most relaxing year I ever had. And then God called me again to go to Joliet Brown Chapel. And I'm thinking to myself, what is going on? Why am I going to all these different places? Yeah. I outlined that to show you something. Even though I did that musical journey from 1988, this is where I caught a glimpse of what God was doing. There was a pastor that we had here by the name of Reverend Kevin Brooks. Kevin Brooks came in and he was trying to take me under his wing and he was going to try to show me the ropes. In fact, in January of 2015, he urged me to go to the leadership conference that happened at Grant Memorial Amy Church. And so what he was going to do, he was going to show me who was what. He was going to show me the major players. He wanted me to see who the presiding elder were. He wanted me to learn all these different things. Yeah. We got to the bishop. As soon as we got to the bishop, the bishop said, hey, Van, how you doing? Then Rick stepped back. Wait a minute, what's going on here? As I'm talking to him, the presiding elders, presiding elder Robinson, presiding elder Baldrick, and, and a couple other pastors came up, hey, Van, they know me by my middle name. And at this point, he got to the point to where I was introducing him to them. And he just kind of just stood back and walked behind me. And everywhere I went, then all of a sudden, I started introducing him to the pastors. And yeah, he's at this church, blah, 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 blah. And then we started seeing the members of the church who knew me. I started introducing Yeah, they're from Brown Chapel. Yeah, Mrs. Mahone used to be over there. I was just getting up. He just standing there. And after about an hour, he was in all. He said, man, these are your people. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I said, man, I'm trying to introduce you to people. You, you know everybody in the building. That was the foundation that was laid for me. It started in 1988. I didn't see it then, but it was amazing that I saw all these different people that knew me and they loved me. Amen? Amen. Now, the interesting thing is, as I was looking at all these different people and I was starting to wonder, what the reality really is. What is the possibility? What's really happening here? God wanted to put the new foundation, start a new foundation. And then as I'm following him, I'm starting to find favor. Not saying that my name is great, but my name is known. Yeah. Come on. When I came before people to talk to different people in different situations, I didn't even have to talk for myself. Other people talked for me because they knew what I had done for them. Yeah. Just so that you know, God is still moving. Yeah. God is still moving. If, if you look at Abram as he runs to the end of the chapter, his life from the end of chapter 11 to chapter 25 spans 100 years of his life. He dies at the age of 175. I don't think I'm going to make it to 175. Come on. I would love to. That would be fun to see what happens. 
But during that time, so many things happened, and, and God was with him, and he was covering him the entire way. Yes. God fulfilled the promises to him, and as I look back over those years of playing for all those churches, God was setting me up. I had no idea that playing for those churches would be that important. People still come to me, and they remember what I had done. There are choirs right now over the conference that are still together, that I put together. Yeah. And I was like, you are doing what? You, you're the director? This little bitty girl, She was now she's grown, and she's got the choirs. And I said, yeah, I'm just doing everything that you did when you were there. I'm like, wow. People remember me. People appreciate me. So God is now working through them on my behalf on several issues. I ask that you keep your eyes open on me as and watch how God is going to be using me. I ask that you watch and see how God is still God. Yeah. He's a great God. He's a good God. But more importantly, I ask that you watch and see how God is calling you. Yeah. A lot of times we see the phone ringing. <laughs> Or we hear the phone ringing, and you know it's God. But we decide not to do it because we think we're going to have to get out of our comfortable situation. Come on. All right, Come on. Of course, this seemed uncomfortable for me or whatever. I might have to do something. I give up some things. But God is calling me. He's not going to call me to something that's going to be worse. Yeah. He's calling me something that's going to make something better. Yeah. And it's amazing because... People look at the situation, they're like, you want to do what? I said, no, this is this, this not what you think. It's not what you think. God is in this. And sometimes people can't see God. Okay. Because okay. God didn't talk to them. Come all on, right come, now. On. Come, come on, come on. Now. God talked to me. Come yeah. on now. You all know what the situation was. Some of you all came over there and saw the church for yourself. And you saw the transformation yeah. in three months. Yeah. And three months later, now people are starting to, you know, kind of peek in, kind of. <laughs> I don't know the names yet, but the thing is, people are starting to invest in what God is doing. They're seeing God working. They have not seen God work in that space for years. Now people are starting to walk across the street from the church because they feel the presence of God in that building. You know how it is, you know, when you get convicted and you know that God is there and God is calling you to do something and they try not to do it. Uh -huh. yes. And when they see me, are oh, you the pastor? I said, I'm the pastor. Can I talk to you? No, 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 we be good, pastor, we good. <laughs> but they come in, some of them come in, they sit in the back row and then they jet out. They know I'm coming after them. Amen? Amen. But the thing that I love about it, God chose me because a lot of people have told me at Founders Day, you are the man for that job. Nobody else. Because you have a heart for the people. Yes. Now, the thing that was amazing about that, I knew of another pastor who had a heart for the people. And I had to see it for myself. When some of you all came to the first church service, at pain in January, you saw emotion from me. Amen? Amen. That emotion I saw in Isaac Kendrick Sr. He was the pastor at Pain and Amy Church, where he would preach and he would have tears because he loved his people that much that he wanted to make sure that everyone was seen. Yeah. And so now when I talk to them, I sometimes I may break down for whatever reason because I love God's people. Whenever I see you, I want to hug you or whatever. It, it, even when you had COVID or whatever the situation was, I held my breath. I don't want to catch COVID, but I still wanted to hug you. Amen? So I ask that you continue to pray for me, pray with me. This is not goodbye. It's see you around. Come on. Amen. Because those 25 years that I was gone from here as a, as a musician, how many times did I come back when you asked me to? When you needed a choir or something for part of your program, I bought a Canaan over here. I bought Carrie over here. I bought Merrill over here. I bought Antioch over here. Amen? Amen? Just because I'm not with you every Sunday, I'm still with you in your heart. 
Because I'm going to carry you all with me wherever I go. Amen. To the point to where people get tired of praying St. John. This must be a big church. <laughs> yeah. It is. So it's amazing how people say, wait a minute, you came from where? Because a lot of people think I came from there. Because that's when I first emerged. I said, no, I came from Greater St. John. They're like, wow, y'all, wait a minute. Doesn't somebody else go to Greater St. John? I said, yeah, you know. <laughs> His name was Walter Johnson. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did come from Greater St. John. They said, there's a several others. So I'm going to make Greater St. John proud. And I'm going to be a proud to be the one of the sons of Greater St. John. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Is there anyone at this time who would like to rededicate themselves to Greater St. John and be part of this family, a family that I grew up in? I see that most of us are members here. Yeah. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. In my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I Like to rededicate themselves as being a position to pray St. John. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. In my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. See you.